The Dynamic O team recently released the version 3 of their Dynamic Content for Elementor, which comes with some powerful upgrades, and that's what we'll be looking at in today's video. So let's jump right into it. So here are five key things you can expect with the release of version 3.0. I'll leave a link to the full documentation in the description below so you can go and check it out for yourself. And I would highly recommend that you check out the frequently asked questions as well. So now let's go ahead with the five items. The first one is the release of Dynamic Shortcodes Special Version. So if you've been following my channel, you'll have noticed that I've been talking a lot about Dynamic Shortcodes, how powerful it is. And now, thankfully, the team have decided that if you have a license for Dynamic Content for Elementor, you will now be given access to a special version, which will give you the functionality of the dynamic shortcodes, but only limited to the Elementor program. So if you're an Elementor user, then that is perfect for you because that means you're not using things like Gutenberg or Oxygen or Breakdance. You're simply using Elementor. So you don't really need all of those extra features. So now you get at no extra cost, dynamic content for Elementor, which you're paying for already, and then dynamic shortcodes special edition. So with those two combined, it gives you superpowers. That's the one thing you need to know that there are two separate plugins. So go to your dashboard, log in using your credentials, then go to the downloads, and then you see the both versions. So there's dynamic content for Elementor and then dynamic shortcodes. You install both of them to your website. And then all you have to do is go to your dynamic content for Elementor and activate the license. And that will automatically activate the license for both of them. So that's it for the licensing. Then that now comes up with the second point, which is that the tokens are now deprecated. If you notice from previously, we had, this is the dynamic content for Elementor. You see that we had these tokens and templates. So the tokens had all of these features. Now, rather than using tokens, these same features are now in dynamic shortcodes in a more powerful manner, which I'll be showing you briefly how to use it. So everything you see here, we have the same equivalent for the dynamic shortcodes, but which is more powerful. So now you see here, we have tokens, we have templates. This is for the old version. But now with the new version, if you go over, you now see that it's now called tokens deprecated and then template system deprecated. That means they are still going to work if you have them enabled, but they highly recommend that you disable them and start using the dynamic shortcodes. Although if both of them are enabled, you can still use both of them at the same time. So that is for users who are already having legacy sites, you don't want to start changing everything now, but you can change it gradually as you get familiar with dynamic shortcodes. The tokens will still be, remain there. They'll still be active and working, but they will not be updated. So there will not be any new features added to the tokens, but the dynamic shortcodes will still keep getting adding features. And then, so when you can do the transition slowly, the same way we have sections and columns in Elementor, and then we have containers. You are highly recommended to use containers, but the sections and columns still exist. So that's one thing about this whole system. So tokens, have been deprecated. So that's why I've disabled them on my own website. But for legacy site users, you might still have them enabled. Then you now go into your pages and then just quickly switch it. So wherever you use the token, which uses the square braces, you now switch it to the short codes, which uses the curly braces. That's the difference. So now let's go back and see the next thing. We'll take a look at the wizard for dynamic short codes which is one reason why I like the Dynamic O team. They try to cater for both simple users and advanced users. So if you're a simple user, you get access to a wizard or a UI interface that you can use. If you're a power user, then you can just write the code yourself. That's one thing I wish Elementor would do as well to give users that option that if you want to write things in pure code, Give me the option to do that. If I want to write things in the UI, then 
I will follow the UI and the limitations of the UI because some things with a UI is always going to be limited. So that's why it's always a good idea to give options so that a user can now go beyond what the UI capability is and then create their own function. That's the same thing like with breaks, you get with your query loop, you get the PHP one that you can write your own PHP yourself or you follow the UI. So that's one thing that I like about so many of these softwares, which I hope Elementor will also do. I know you're trying to cater for users who are easy to use the software, but you should also cater for power users. So give them the option to be able to write their own code themselves. So that's it. And we'll see how both of them work within this example. So here we have an example that I've created. I basically took it from a website called allrecipes.com. Maybe in a future video, I'll go through how I designed it. So basically, this is the website. And I noticed that lots of things are repeating. So rather than having to repeat content a lot, you can create a template and then use ACF to write the content so that the content and the design are separate things. Let me close this. So what I, I looked at this design and I saw, okay, what they have here is a breadcrumb at the top. Then they have the post title. They have a rating field. They have a short description. Then they have an image with some galleries. And then they have this time, prep time, total time, servings, and some other times that they may want to add, like the cooking time. Then they have the rest of the content. So I thought to myself, okay, this is a good use case to showcase how dynamic short codes and dynamic content for Elementor works. So for the ingredients, I made them into a repeater field using ACF Pro. Same with the directions, I made them a repeater field because they're always in steps. So rather than just having one bulk, I just decided to that each step is a repeater field. And that's it. And the rest of them, these I used a, an ACF group block and created some ACF text fields for all of these or the number fields. And we'll see how everything works. So this is the design that is slightly different. So we have the breadcrumbs, the post title, then this is my own design. So we have these set of ingredients is an ACF repeater field. These are just ACF fields and number fields. So for the number of calories, the fat content, the carbs, and then protein and the rest of them. Then we have the time. So whenever there's a time, it shows up. If that time is not needed, that whole thing should not appear on the front end. So that is where dynamic short codes comes into play, that you now have some conditions. So if it exists, show the data. If it doesn't exist, then don't show any data at all. And this was using dynamic short codes as well to create a calculation field. So basically, it calculates all the total time and then it displays the number here. So I don't have to do this manually. Everything is done automatically. So as long as I set the prep time, cooking time, any additional time, this will show up and then the total time will be calculated. The other thing I did was, like I said, the repeater field. I'll show you all of these fields now. And finally, I also showed with the last thing that they showed here, and go back, which is the integration. So now it is integrated with everything. So the dynamic shortcode is now integrated with all of the different widgets that you have with dynamic content for Elementor. So you have your ACF repeater widget, your ACF flexible content widget. We have even with the forms and everything, they're all tightly integrated. So that is the example we have here. So now if I say I put in my name, I put in an example and then I put in a message. So watch what happens. It will display a message now when I press send. See, it says, hi, David, because that's the name I put as the name. Thanks for submitting your inquiry about the post title. It took the post title, Classic Waffles. Then it says, do you think that 25 minutes is too long for cooking? Which is the time 
that is gotten from here the total time. So you see, now I can mix and match in my output. So either in the message output or maybe in a PDF form or in the dynamic email, I can now impute both data from the form as well as data from the page. Everything will show up in the form. So that's how powerful these dynamic shortcodes and dynamic content for Elementor in combination with each other, the form is superpower. So now let's go ahead and see how I created it. So here we have the ACF field group. I created basically a post type called recipes. Then I added some field groups to that recipe. I used ACF Pro in this case. So this is the recipe meta. It has basically the description. The post title is already there, so we don't need to do that. I forgot to add a ratings field, but you can add a ratings field as well. There's the text area for the description. There's a group block for the times. So within that group, we have prep time, cooking time, any additional time that is needed, and the number of servings. That is all within a group. Then we have the ingredients, which is a repeater field. And all it has is just the name of the ingredient. Then the next one are the directions. So those number of steps, which are also repeater field. Because I noticed from the example that all of their pages were structured similarly. So it's always with steps. So step one, two, three, four, five. So to make it easy, I just created a repeater field and say, you just add in your step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on and so forth. Then the rest of the items are just number fields for the calories, fat, protein. Then there was the gallery field for those gallery images, although I didn't use it in the example. So now let's go ahead and see the template. So here we have the template that I created. It was a single post template for my individual recipes. And the widgets I used uh mostly dynamic shortcodes widgets so you don't need elementor pro to actually create the design but the single post templates i had to use elementor pro to create the single post template so that's bear that in mind so basically we have this is the breadcrumbs which is the widget from dynamic shortcodes so you just the breadcrumb you have that widget then i use containers and grids and this is the title. I was using dynamic shortcodes here, but it don't really. If you have Elementor Pro, you can just use the simple post title, and then you get your post title. If you don't have Elementor Pro, then you can use the dynamic shortcodes widget, and if it's a bit confusing, you can use the wizard. That is makes it easy. You also have the dynamic tags here, but let me just use the dynamic shortcodes, make it more performant. So wizard, click on the wrench icon, press start. So the post, and what I want from the post is the title. So I just search for the meta field, which is the title. It will not show up until I press generate. So I can now choose all the information I want and I'll just press generate now. And then it generates the shortcode for me. So I don't need to remember how to create the shortcode. It will generate it for me. If I want to now use the shortcode in a more complex formula, I can then just go ahead and copy the shortcode and use it somewhere else. But I don't need that here. So this is kind of replacing two things at the same time. So it's replacing back in the day. You have to use that, that discover tokens. You drop the discover tokens so you'll be able to see the token name that you want to use. But now you can just use this wizard and then you can copy the token and use it somewhere else or the shortcode. And the beauty of the shortcodes over tokens is that it has more performance, it is more secure, it is more powerful because you can nest a shortcode inside another shortcode. With the tokens, you didn't have that option to nest tokens, but with shortcodes, you can nest it, you can add conditions, which is what I did in this example. Here, I was trying to show that you can do it manually, so if you go to the wrench icon, you see I did some long things that I don't want to bore you with because I didn't want to write the code using Elementor because I was trying to create a list, but with Elementor, 
some things are limited, so I decided to write everything myself. The entire list, I decided to create an array, and then I looped that in through a template and created my list. But that is too complex for some people, so you don't really need this. But I'll show you how you can easily get the total time with using any widget. So let me use the heading widget in this case. So say, let me go to dynamic tags and then wizard. So say you want to get the prep time, which is in a group field. So it is quite easy. Just press start, say the post, the... Oh no, it's an ACF field. So let me click ACF. Because when you choose ACF, then it gives you more control over how the ACF fields work. So that's why I have to choose ACF in this case. Then the field is the prep time. So I just search for prep. That's prep time. It's from the current post. Yes. It's not a date. So I don't need to format it as date. And I don't need to do any filter. So let me just generate short code. And this is how the short code works. So for group fields, it's a bit slightly different. The name is, you start with the name of the group field itself, which I called timing. If you go back, I believe it's, is it? Okay, yeah. So it's called timing, then underscore with the name of your field. So this is prep time. So that's how it is here. So you see timing underscore prep underscore time. And then it will give me this number 10. Then I can now go to the advanced tab, go to before and say prep time. Then maybe I'll just, in this case, I'll just use a, a BR tag. Then the after, I'll say minutes. You see, I get my time. Prep time, 10 minutes, and that's it. If you don't want to use this one, it's a bit more complicated. You can just use the ACF field widget, which is dedicated for ACF fields. Let me click on the plus sign. See ACF and drop that widget in there. We'll get a very similar result. So start by searching for the field we want. That's prep time. See, so get the same time. Choose what it is, it was a text field, or was it a number field? Yeah, number field. Then, that will now give me other options if I want to format it. Then I can now add the same thing. So, the beginning, let me say strong prep time. Then, let me just make it to be a block so that it is one on top of the other. Then the text after, I'll say space minutes. And see, I get the same thing like I get here. And it is far easier. I didn't need to do so many things. So that's the difference. If you want to use the wizard, you can use the wizard. If you want to use the dedicated widget, you can use the dedicated widget. If you want to write the code yourself, which let me show you now. Let's say I have, let me try and get this total time using the manual way. So let me use another Heading widget. Sorry, I'm not using the right tags in this case. Just pardon me. But let's continue. Let's go to dynamic shortcodes. And this time I want to do it manually. So open and close the curly brace. Then I'll say, this time I want to do an addition of all of them. So let me say, just do an addition. So plus, column, then each of the individual fields. The first field is ACF timing underscore prep underscore time. So added with the cooking time. So ACF timing underscore cooking underscore time. See now I get 25 for the two of them, and that is the value. So now I can go before it and say strong, maybe total time. Then 
this will be the next one and that's it then at the end put minutes for minutes so now i can probably come to the advanced tab custom css and just say selector strong display block and i get a very similar result like the other ones let me see i just make it a p tag so you see that's how easy it is so you can use three different methods to get the same result you can use the wizard you can use the dedicated field or you can just basically write everything using the short code manually so that's where they tell you that it is having that deep integration and then for the other one which was the form so the here is the form all i did was so for each of the fields under the advanced tab you see it has the id of name the other one has advanced tab the id of email and so on and so forth so if you go i just simply went under action after submit i created an action called message generator then under the message generator i simply just added the different things so if it's data from a form all you have to do is say form and then the detail so that's form column name that will get me the name from the form then if it's something from the post i cannot say post title and that will get me the post title and that's how you can mix and match things from the post itself things from the form and so on and so forth everything can work that's why dynamic shortcodes is more powerful and yeah that's it if you don't want to use the text you can now use a template you can, can go and generate a template and use that here but i just want to write a simple information at the end of the submission so this will now make your users to feel a bit more welcome because when they now submit either you take them to a thank you page and then you use all of this data in that thank you page and that will now make them feel good or you can just display directly under the form as a success message or you can use it in your dynamic emails you can use them in your dynamic pdf generator and so on and so forth the last thing is using the repeater field so that's what i use here same thing you can either create the repeater field using the ui or they'll give you an option that you can now write the html yourself so like i said that's why i love dynamic u they give you both the ui options as well as the code option so in this code option they will also give you a lot of information of how you can use the code in case you are stuck so i was trying to get a way to display the numbers automatically i didn't want to start having to write the numbers myself so thankfully if you can see here they just talk about row index so all you have to just do is say data row index the data column row index and then it will pull in the number so as you can see here is step one step two and you can also use this inside another shortcode so let's say you don't want to start from number one you can now say maybe you want to start from number two so i'll just say plus one and just watch what happens it starts from number two because i say i want it to add one to the number that is being generated and you see automatically to go two three four if I even want it to be multiplied, so I just come back here instead of saying plus, I'll say multiply by two. Now you say two, four, six, eight, and so on and so forth. That's just how powerful it is. You just say data row index to get the number within the data row. And for each of the items, because it's a repeater, that's what we call it, it's a repeater field. So you have to loop through all of the items that's why it is in a loop for the repeater field if you want to write it yourself you can, there are other ways you can do you can use the acf loop shortcode which everything is in the documentation but if you want to use their widget then it makes it easier and you can just use this in their widgets and everything will just function superbly 
yeah that's it so hopefully in a future video i will now go through all of these step by step starting from the creation of the acf fields and how i did everything step by step so that you can follow along right now i've just been jumping around different things so you may not have gotten it fully but don't worry in a future video i'll show you how i did everything step by step so that's just the introduction to show you that with the new integration now you can work in three different ways basically you can always if you want to do a hard coding you can use the dynamic shortcodes dynamic tag if you want to do a sort of soft coding then you can use the wizard then if you want to get more help then you can use the widgets that come from dynamic content for elementor uh, thanks for watching and and on the 7th of june i'll be doing a live chat which will go through some of these things step by step again and then you can ask questions and hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions for you and we will get to know dynamic content for elementor better and also love dynamic shortcodes so until next time bye <music>